You remember last time we did, last time we did a uh, beginner lesson with the more training the flexors, using the flexors only. You remember that? Flexors meaning the muscles that close the articulations and that they are fast muscles working very fast and are unable or unfit for prolonged effort. For the prolonged effort, it's the, the extensors. But we did also one thing we did show that if we work on one part of the body and one not, then we can find the difference in the way other parts of the body are affected. Uh, that we will do that later a little bit more deeply so that you can appreciate that we'll do it actually like that. You will see that the part of the body will do movements which will be symmetrical in doing. That means both sides of the body will do exactly the same thing. But one side will be attended to with your attention, with your awareness. And that part will change, the other one will not change. Which will show you in your body, in your experience, that movement without awareness makes no change. It's just work. It's worth nothing. You don't learn a thing from that. Now, let's go. We'll try it now. Would you please lie on your back? And we will go to the flexor movement a little bit farther than what we did last time. And would you please bend your knees? <coughs> Of course, the feet shoulder wide and interlace your fingers, put them behind the head, and then lift the head. And now we did only with the right leg, now you do it with the left. Move with the left knee towards or in the direction of the left elbow and the elbow the left elbow, the left, the left elbow, left knee, left elbow, and repeat that movement several times until it becomes easy, familiar. And while you do that, of course, you pay attention to how the configuration on the floor, it means the pressure distribution on the body, can you see changes with your movement? If you pay attention to that, you will find that the body softens and it's easier to get the touching will become come by itself without you having to try hard. Now, do the same thing with the same knee but directed to the right elbow. directed to the right elbow. Don't lift the foot to the ceiling because that is straightening the leg. We don't want to straighten the leg, we want the elbow, the knee. Don't straighten the leg. You're still straightening. Don't straighten at all. That's right. Now, think of that as you did last time. You saw that it works so nicely. Direct your chin towards the knee. The chin. <coughs> with your hands behind the head, still the head behind, you still hold with your hands. But the idea is touching, the, you direct the chin towards the knee and the knee towards the chin. And then towards the right elbow.
and towards the left elbow very slowly and now think of touching the knee with your forehead it doesn't matter whether it touches or not you direct them in that as if to touch Can you see it goes a bit rapidly to, through the things we did the last time? Now stop it, rest a minute. While you rest, pay attention whether already now you can begin to realize, if you pay attention, that on the back, the way the back lies on the floor, you can feel that some parts have sunk clearer to the floor, are in more intimate contact with the floor. Now, of course, if we pay attention first before we start, then it's clearer. But if you pay attention now, you'll be able to dis to feel that, to sense that, with the movement progressing. Now, turn your head to the right. Put your left hand behind the right ear so that the head lies into the palm of the hand and then lift your right, left knee and put your hold it with your right hand below the patella both legs the other leg is of course standing also bend the other leg to stand on the floor bend the other leg bend the right leg so the, bend the right leg and now Move your left knee and the left ear one in the direction of the other, towards the other. Means you lift your head and move slowly. Don't force. Don't force. Bend the other knee. Bend the other knee, the other foot standing. The right foot bent, the right knee bent, the right knee bent. Bend it, bend it, bend it. It's not bent. It's not bent. You're not standing on that foot. You see, you slip. Bend the right knee so that you can stand. Unless you can't do it, maybe there's something wrong with your knee. Then it's a different thing. Don't stand. But if you can stand, stand. That's right. That's right. Several movements like that. Gentle ones. And note where, which part of the body presses against the floor now. Which hip presses more, which shoulder blade more. And in the middle of the spine, which parts touch the floor, which don't. And now change over your hands. Means turn the face the other way and put your right hand behind the left ear. And now the left hand on your left leg, only the hands. And you keep on directing the left knee in the direction of the right ear. Of course, the other foot standing. Now go on slowly, gradually, do that. Now 
Note only which parts are pressed against the floor while you do that, which are different from the previous movement. and stop it and rest a while. Stretch your legs. And then scan your body the way it lies on the floor and see whether the difference you became aware a minute ago is growing, that you can feel other places stretching becoming more limp, lying clearer, squarer on the floor. And bend your knees again. <coughs> Join the fingers, means interlace your fingers behind the head. Lift the head and direct again the knee towards the right elbow a few times and the left elbow a few times and see whether it's easier, where with the less effort than before, you bring them closer together. And those who found it difficult to touch, maybe it's touching a bit. Now with the left elbow, towards the same left knee. And observe the difference on the floor when you do it with the right elbow or the left elbow. and then stop it again, and again listen to your body on the floor. Now pay attention to your breathing, that means observe your nostrils, the upper lip, to find out when do you breathe in, and when do you breathe out? And whether you can feel what you do, what happens with the lower abdomen when you breathe in? Below your navel, is the movement there? Is the movement in the chest? in the sternum, it means the breastbone. Put your right hand on your breastbone and the left below your navel. Just gently lie and don't change anything. Just see, feel what is actually happening when you do that. What moves first, the chest or the abdomen when you breathe in? is a movement in the lower belly and the chest bone, and which starts first when you breathe in? And what moves first when you breathe out?
Now, do you know what's happening? Then bend your knees again. <coughs> and this time, interlace your fingers. And then you will see that everyone interlaces the fingers in one way. It's possible to do it in two ways. It means you can do it with the right index being above or over the left, and the other one, the left over the right, which makes a difference that way or that way. The one is habitual to some, everyone has his habitual one, and so now you try the non-habitual, the non-habitual one. But make sure that you actually change, because the habitual one has that <laughs> in it, that sometimes if you don't think you say the non-habitual, then you say it's the habitual anyway. So make the habitual and change over to make sure that you do the non-habitual interlacing. Put it behind the head and lift and see how this minor change makes the whole feeling different. Lift the head. Can you see it's quite different lifting the head because this minor change is actually a big shift in the head and in the shoulder muscles and the neck muscles. Close a bit the elbows when you lift the head. Not much, just enough. That's right. And now move the, el the knee, the left knee, in the direction of the forehead while you lift your head. That's right. And in the direction of the mouth. And the nose and the chin. And now l leave the right hand behind the head and the left hand put behind your left knee. It means in the crouch of the knee, behind the knee. That's right. And now direct again the mouth towards the knee and the knee towards the mouth the chin, the nose, the forehead, and keep on playing it like that, changing yourself, this and that, until you can tell all. Now, watch also which side of the body presses harder against the floor now. And observe whether you breathe out when you fold yourself or breathe in and try actually. Breathe in while you do it. Make sure that you breathe in while you do it. Breathe in while you do it and see whether what it feels like. Breathe in two or three times. Breathe in while you do it. And you feel that the breathing in interferes with the last little bit of the movement. But does not interfere at the beginning. <laughs> and now breathe out while you do it. Make sure that air is coming out while you do it. Now change the hands only. It means your right hand comes under the knee or below, behind the knee and the left behind the head and keep on doing it.
Mm-hmm. You do four, five, six movements in the direction of the nose, direction of the chin. You remember what we did yesterday, that the chin means tilting the head back. It's, it doesn't mean tilting the head <clears throat> the same way. That's right. Now, join your fingers behind the knee. <coughs> That's right. <coughs> And therefore you'll find that the thumbs are also behind the knee if you join the hands like that. And this time, bring the knee in the direction of the head and think of touching the knee with your right ear and with your left ear. And again with the forehead But if you want to touch with the left ear, you, you must look right. If you don't look to the right, how will the ear go to touch the knee? Never. You must look clearly to the right when you try to touch with any ear, with the left ear, and to the left when you... Hmm? Look left to touch with the right ear. Look right to touch with the left ear. That's right. And now with the forehead. With the nose. with the mouth, with the chin. Now, stop a minute, hold it like that. But now, observe what touches the floor and lift your right leg high to the ceiling and swing it and sit up. Now, spread your feet shoulder wide, bend your knees like that, and look, put your right hand behind the knee from in between your legs the right hand behind the left knee, the thumb included, and the left hand crossed over under the left. Bend your, your head downward slowly and gradually, oi, from in between your legs, put your, from in between your legs, from in between your legs, put your right hand between. Don't look at anybody else. You have a head of your own. Between your legs, put your right hand between your legs and get hold of the behind your left knee and then the left hand behind the right knee, the thumbs included, bend your head a little bit and gradually roll back, roll back on your head, lift your leg, and when you go there, lift your feet higher and then swing them and come back to the sitting position. If Put your hands there. You can't fail if you do what I said. Try slowly. Bend your head down, then roll back. Now, lift your feet to the ceiling and sit back. That's right. If you do exactly like that, there is nobody who can't come back. Well, do it a few times like that until you feel you, it's easy to do.
Now, stop it a minute and cross over your hands. The one forearm is higher, nearer to you. Change over. That's right. And do the same thing. That's enough. Lie on your back and observe the difference, the way the small of the back lies on the floor. If you put your hand there, make sure that you're not lifting it before, so that you lift it and put the hand and then say it's the same thing. If you, you must put the hand so that you don't lift. Means detach it from the shoulder. Bend your knees. And now see, put both hands behind the head. Interlace your fingers. And the right leg we didn't bend only last time. Would you please direct the right knee towards the left elbow and see whether it may whether it's more it's more difficult than the other one or easier and then the right elbow and then the forehead the forehead and the nose and the mouth and the chin that's right and now try the same movements with the left knee Now, without forcing, try with, to touch either knee with either elbow. It means you lift both knees and touch the right elbow to the right knee and the left elbow to the left knee at the same time, simultaneously. Are there many people who can't do it? Slowly. Don't force, don't force. And now, touch with the left elbow, the right knee, and with the right elbow, the left knee. And now, again, cross your arms and put them between your legs and get hold of the behind your knees. And then, with a simpler swing than before, in between your knees, uh, and then swing means lift your feet to the ceiling a bit and swing yourself to the sitting position. Now, this time, change, look, uncross your arms and put your hands behind like that. And do the same thing. Roll back and get up.
gradually see whether you can do it with half the swing. Only by stretching a bit the legs it's enough. You don't really have to lift them very high, but they must be spread. It's easier. The feet, the knees should be spread the width of the pelvis or the shoulders. Now, that's enough. Can you see why is it so easy to do when you hold the hands? <coughs> There must be a reason. And you will see that it has nothing to do with the holding. It has to do with what you do with your flexor muscles to the extensors of the back. Once you hold and the flexors are tight, the extensors become easy, and therefore it's easy to roll. Now, you can see that. As you hold, put now your hands, cross them as before, but don't use your hands. Don't pull with them. Just hold them and see whether just holding them is enough. Roll back and go and see. Don't use them. Then obviously the, the, the hands make only that, that your head is not going away from the knees. Your hands make it sure that when you go back, you don't change the distance between the knees and the and that's the important thing and not pulling all right so you can try again and therefore also you can do it here also without holding that don't use them you'll see you can get up without it all right Now, if that is so, you can put them also here. If, as you don't use them, put them there. And when you go there, push the knees instead of pulling. Makes it even easier. Now, you must have, you must have, you especially, <coughs> spread your knees shoulder wide. <coughs> Otherwise, well, why is it essential shoulder wide? Why do I... Many people have scoliosis in a greater or smaller degree. And if they roll back with the knees together, they roll from one hip to the left shoulder blade. And not through the spine, and therefore the spine remains. Now, when you have the legs open, and you roll from one side to the other, you will see it immediately. Therefore, you actually go when you roll, you roll more to the middle, and therefore one hip and, and the other hip are more aligned. You can correct it without actually thinking about it. Many people have scoliosis in a greater or smaller degree. And if they roll back with the knees together, they roll from one hip to the left shoulder blade. And not through the spine, and therefore the spine remains crooked through life in spite of doing that. Now, when you have the legs open, and you roll from one side to the other, you will see it immediately. Therefore, you actually go when you roll, you roll more to the middle, and therefore one hip and, and the other hip are more aligned. You can correct it without actually thinking about it. But if you hold them together, then it's a question of chance. You go from one hip to the left shoulder blade, and then you roll like that all your life, you don't know. And therefore, you actually continue. The more you work, the more your scoliosis is there. Therefore, it's not because I like spread legs that I do that. But the fact that you don't, you will see, those who have a scoliosis don't. They don't open their legs, and they, in order, that's how they got the scoliosis. Otherwise, they wouldn't have got it.
that it must become equal. If, the, if look, if one shoulder is turned more than the other back, and you hold your leg squarely like that, then every movement makes the ribs that don't touch go a little bit lower. Those that touch are pushed in. Therefore, you, you iron them out. But if you don't do that, how will they iron out? You go on doing what is familiar to you, and therefore, the more you work, your muscles get stronger, and therefore, the scoliosis gets stronger. <coughs> therefore, it's not a mania that for me to spread the needle. By the way, you will see, we'll soon put them together also. So you go, right. Try it now again, push your legs, and make sure that while we do the rolling, that you have your legs spread. That will make the, the back better. Just a few moments. Now you, you see, you, you, you close your knees. You close your feet without thinking. By opening the legs and holding the hands like that, you fix the plane of symmetry of the body that means through the spine and make the body roll exactly like that. Therefore, there's pressure on the ribs that stick out and there's freedom for the ribs who are inward to go to the floor. Therefore, it improves the back. It tires it out. Understood? Sure. It's so obvious. And then you'll find, look, again, you have your knees together. And I, there, is, there must be some reason for it. But is that, is that the farther in the line? The uh, knees, when you look, look how, look how, look how the others are. Yeah, look, look behind you, look everywhere. Therefore, you see, you should be particular in in very fine human qualities. But if you are particular in shoes because you need special shoes. It's not because the feet are more delicate, because the feet are not good. That's why they are sensitive feet. If you, you see, the things that, if you can't digest what other people digest, it's not because you are more delicate, but because you are weaker and your stomach is not good, the digestion is not good. But if you want to be different from other people, then you should be your, in your music, in your reading, in your thinking, in your writing, in, in whatever you do, in your painting, in your singing, there you can be different from anybody you like. But in the lower functions, if they are different, they're usually different in the bad side. See, if your head is not in the middle, it's not because you are better. It's because the head is not right. You see? But if you are not in the middle with your thinking about left and right, that's your higher function. You can be liberal or communist or fascist, whatever you like. That's not my business. But you should know what, what you are, and the head should be in the middle. And you should be able to put it to the left and to the right, if necessary. All right, now, you can see, therefore, you can do it with the hands. And therefore, you don't have to do it at all. Put the hands there and don't push the knees either and see whether you can't get that. <coughs> and of course you can. Uh, that's uh, very, very good. Would you please, can you see we make it a, a little bit more difficult every time. Now, sit and touch with the soles of the feet.
together and get hold anywhere you like on the where you feel comfortable you can hold your ankles or your trousers or anything you like and roll like that on your back and come back That's not so easy, huh? It's not, but as you, who asked you to hold the feet? I told you, hold where it's easy. Hold the ankles, high up. That's right. And now you can lift your legs, open them, and come down. That's right. Now, you can move one foot away from the other so that you can open them, it's be easier. That's why we, that's right, do it. Open a bit your feet when you go up, it will come much easier back. Right? You open and you close them when you come down. That will be very, very easy. Right. That's good enough. Now, see the following. The both feet are together. Put your right hand beneath both feet and hold them together. That's right. And with your left hand on the floor, put it on the floor, roll back and lift both feet like that and come back. You can help yourself with the left hand on the floor. That's right. That's right. Try a few times. No, no, if you just put it behind awkwardly like that. While you roll, use the hand to push the floor so that you can come back with one hand. Slowly. You will find that the less effort you make with your legs, the easier it will be. Don't push with your legs, swing them. How do you, that's how you hold your legs. Hold the feet together, no, no, look, everybody, no. Both the soles of the feet, one, and get hold of, of oh. look at everybody around you if you can't understand that. Now try, put the hand under, no, you didn't do it. Put your hand underneath, both feet underneath. Shove your hand underneath the feet. Ah, that's simple. That's simple, yeah. Now try it now. Get hold of the feet with the left hand and roll on the other side. That's right, and come back, slowly. Try again, see why is it difficult? You saw that it's not necessary, yeah? That's right. Now you see this irons out one side and then the other. That's right. And now take with both hands and it, that one behind the other, or interlace the fingers, and go ahead like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Swing, lift your feet high, and then going down, lower the legs e easily. That's right. Very good. Most of you do very fine. That's right. Excellent. Now lie on your back and see how different the back lies on the floor now. Look which parts of the body touch better than before. You'll see the lumbar region, the small of the back, is ironed itself out to the floor. A in my own experience, I had a group and mothers bring their children, 
they don't find their babysitter, so they bring their children. And the children, of course, do that better than the grown-ups. And one, the boy of about eight, did it, and then he said, the floor ironed itself out to my back. <laughs> That's what he said in other words. I found that very, very, very clever. And now bend your knees. And let's see what happens now. Would you please interlace your fingers behind the head and try to touch with the left knee the chin and see where the left knee and the chin. Is it any way easier than before? Does it come a little nearer than before? Now turn your head to the right, put your left hand behind, and now join your legs together. <coughs> this time you will be master. And with your right hand, put it outside, from the outside, behind both knees. The forearm behind both knees. All right? And now, gradually, slowly, bend the head so that you direct your left ear to the knees and the knees to the left ear. And go on doing that several times. Breathe out, of course, while you do that. Slowly, don't force. Observe, do you lift anyway your pelvis off the floor while you do that? Or don't you at all? Which parts of the body, of the shoulders, of the chest, leave the floor? Now, lift yourself like that, hold yourself together like that for a second, and try to rock the body forwards and backwards. A few movements. That's right. Now, stop it, try again, put both knees towards the ear, and see whether that's any better. Now stay like that, but rock the body right and left. A little bit, not much, just tiny movements, right and left. You look to your right. If you do big movements, you will fall. And, and you, it won't get better. Small movements, just like that. And now try again to touch the ear with the knees and see whether that's still better. All right, stop it, stretch out, and rest a little. Bend your knees. Turn your face to the left. Put your right hand behind the left ear, and your left hand join the, f the legs together and introduce your forearm from the outside. And now try a few moments, a few times, direct. Two, three, breathe out, don't hurry. It doesn't matter if it doesn't touch. That's right. And now hold the body together like that and rock it a few times to and fro, forward and up. That's right. 
observe in which parts of the body do you feel that a strain and it could be straighter, suppler, better. If you pay attention to that, it will improve. If you don't, you just work hard and struggle slowly. Now stop a minute and rock right and left. That's right. And now try again, direction, directing the knees to the, and that, that's right. Stop it, R straighten out, and again listen to who ironed itself out to what? The floor to you or you to the floor? Now observe whether you can feel the breathing. Breathing without touching. But you can feel what is moving and what is not moving. And now will you please put palms on the floor on either side of the body. And now, bend your knees as if you were holding your legs, your hands between the legs. Bend them, swing them over, and sit up. And now, bend your knees, put them together, put them together, bring your feet closer to yourself so that you sit properly. And now, Hold on with both hands to the knees. Try to put your nose between the knees. Eh? Can you? The great majority can. Can you put your chin there? Your forehead? Now, would you please put your your forehead in between to the knees and roll like that on your back and see whether you can touch like that while lying. If not, why? The fact you can touch, then why can't you when lying? No, that's not lying. That is, you have the weight of the body that if you couldn't do it, it will also. Now, lie on your back. Leave, put the feet on the floor, and now interlace your fingers, <coughs> lift your head with your hands, of course, and now lift the head and move both knees towards your face and see whether you can bring them in between your elbows. Can you touch with your knees something? Look, can you remember how it was yesterday with all, most of you? Now, can you catch the knees with your elbows? Catch the knees with your elbows. Hold them. Catch your knees with your elbows. Do you breathe in or you breathe out? Stay like that and breathe so that you can stay on. Stop it. Leave it. That's right. And now, put your elbows together and catch your elbows with your knees. Catch your elbows from the outside and press the, the elbows together with the knees. All right, now stop that. And now try the movements we started yesterday at the beginning and see how ridiculously easy it is now. Try what did we do yesterday? You remember we took the, what we took with, no, we, 
took one hand, one left hand behind the head, right hand below the patella, below the patella, not behind, and we moved the left elbow to the right knee. Is that, why, what is that to do? And now take the other knee, take that, no, the same hands, no changing the hands, take the other knee with the, left, with the right hand and touch the elbow. You can touch anything, your ear. <laughs> now, hold on to both knees with your hands and see whether you can't put your nose in between the knees now. So you can do it lying too. Why couldn't you do a minute ago? A minute ago, you're in the sitting position, you did it. While you rolled, it detached itself. Now you can do it like that. All right? Now, would you please roll to any side, get, a, get up, walk around and see what it feels like in the extensors. It means, how do you stand when you walk now? Do you feel shorter, taller, heavier, lighter? Where are the shoulders? How is the breathing? Do you feel tired? Do you feel whatever? What do you feel? Go around and think what you've learned, how you learned to manipulate the body into positions. And now, of course, next time we'll do the extensors and other flexes. Thank you very much. <laughs>